Hi guys, it's Jessica here for a Dolly Updates video. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to touch everything that's occurred Dolly-wise since my last update video, so I'm probably going to just talk about most recent stuff. <laughs> um, mostly what I wanted to do was uh, um, show you guys the sewing that I've been working on, the, pro the sewing projects that I've finished for my dolls. Uh, we're in quarantine here, uh, and I think I mentioned a couple videos back uh, <clears throat> that uh, I've been cut back to like five days a week at work. Um, uh, this is one of the, oh, in the last 10 or 12 years, the only times I've had just one job. I usually have two or three or more jobs, and at the beginning of the year, I cut back and was only working at one job. And uh, that's this is, demonstrates kind of that reason why I like to have so many jobs is because I putting all your eggs in one basket. Um, but I don't know, it might not matter how many other hospitals I work at, they might all have similar issues. Uh, but um, uh, we are considered essential services but we're only supposed to be seeing emergency and urgent cases. The American Veterinary Medical Association and all the other kind of local associations have kind of put out the info that um, <clears throat> if, if it's not something that can wait three months kind of idea, then, um, then you can see those. But basically any sort of like annual wellness or routine things are, you're not supposed to be seen. Um, so the practice I work at, which is open um, five days a week, has now cut back to three days a week and only a half a day. So they're open from eight to one and we're trying to cram everything into those. Um, so I am hoping that things might improve on the work front uh, because of finances. Uh, you know, going from 30 hours a week to five has definitely hit the pocketbook. Um, so that part isn't very cool. And the governor uh, of my state just uh, a couple days ago announced that the quarantine mandates are now in effect until um, May 4th. Um, or yeah, May 4th, because a lot of people are making the joke, the, the joke, may the 4th be with you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, um, I didn't want to spend a ton of time talking about, you know, some of the more negative aspects. Um, I, what I would say is that, um, overall, like for me and my state of mind, it's not that bad. <laughs> um, you know, being told that you're not supposed to go out and do anything. You're not supposed to go out in public, you're, you know, just for the most essential things. Like that doesn't really affect my life very much. Um, and pretty much, you know, being essentially almost unemployed <laughs> for, for all practical intents and purposes and just staying home and sewing all day. Like that's what I've been doing since this started uh, a couple weeks ago is I uh, sew all day long <laughs> and um, stay, my habits are st have started to get pretty bad. <laughs> I'm staying up until like 2 a.m. <laughs> and sleeping in, uh, but eh, you know, I guess I should make an effort to try to keep my schedule uh, so that my schedule doesn't get too out of whack, but eh. <laughs> uh, I have my... Um, I have my pajamas that I wear at night, and then I get up in the morning and put on my daytime pajamas. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's amazing. That's, <laughs> uh, I, I know, I know for a lot of people that being, you know, not being able to go to work, not being able to do social things, um, having to basically stay at home is like the worst punishment imaginable husband downstairs is one of those people um, and it's funny because because he's bored he assumes I am too and I'm not bored <laughs> I have pl 
plenty of things to do and I'm perfectly happy. Um, so, uh, but I know for a lot of people that this is very challenging for them. Um, and somebody had posted on their Facebook, like, this is what introverts go through their entire life, <laughs> being forced and living in a world where they have to be extroverted, um, <laughs> which I think is, is kind of true. <laughs> it's kind of true. But uh, yeah, I, I hope that, I do hope everybody is doing well. Um, and for essential workers, whether you're in the medical field or you are working in grocery stores, um, uh, any sort of the essential fields where you do have to continue going to work um, and maybe potentially even putting yourself at risk to, to do that. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you a lot. And I hope that the most of the people that you're dealing with are um, are are having gratitude as well. I hope so. But uh, yeah. So um, this uh, this is my um, my teal Mananjanu who recently came back from Jade Garden BJD with her face up. Um, this was the project that I just finished the other night, um, and I am really really quite proud basically uh, basically with with how things turned out. Um, and this is probably the most, um, um, I don't know, the most intricate as of the, of the corsets that I've, that I've tried to work on, um, with the embroidery and, uh, the couching, new term that I learned, uh, sewing down the gold, uh, metallic thread. I'm going to try to bring her closer here and so that you can see. Um, so this pattern, uh, is loosely, uh, based on the original one that Raukin posted, uh, back in, I don't know, 2017 when she posted that. Uh, I've made modifications to fit my, um, my ingenue, but as far as, like, her pattern and her instructions and, like, how to put it together and the boning and things like that. Uh, I still highly, highly recommend that that pattern to people. It teaches you a lot of stuff. So uh, I definitely have her Raukin to thank for, um, you know, this really great resource. But uh, this, this one, um, so the bigger flowers, I'm gonna put down the light. <laughs> I'm like lifting this lamp. The bigger flowers, these ones, um, are um, machine embroidered flowers that I cut from, that I would uh, cut out of embroidered lace. Um, like, uh, I don't have any one, but like these sorts of embroidered laces uh, that, uh, that are, uh, I have a bunch of the ones that have flowers and floral. And so I cut those out and then I add a lot of my own colors on top of that. So I embroider on top of it. Um, and then uh, this one, I kind of did my own. So all of this, and that's it. it I don't know whether they're wings or leaves. It's very abstract and I was just experimenting. Um, but all of that is, um, is done by hand and then of course sewing down the gold work um, that's all done by hand too and um, it's called it's called couching and basically it means that you um, you yarn or metallic thread in this case that is big uh, and bulkier is sewed down with individual threads and I don't think I'll be able to zoom up close enough so that you can see that um, uh, it's sewed down with a smaller thread, but that's the whole idea is that I, I typically try to choose a thread that's the same color so that it, it's not ob obtrusive and you don't see it. Um, but it, it, it ties down, um, sews down that thread. And then I, there's a bunch of beadwork that I added and I've, um, I've just gotten smaller and smaller and smaller with my beads. These are the ones that I'm using now. These are, um, I'm not sure how the term, 
like how you would call these. They're seed beads, but um, like I'll show you one of the bottles. Um, they're seed beads. They're very, very tiny. And uh, I read that as 15 aught. Um, so basically the uh, the larger the number, the smaller the bead size when it's aught, so 15 aught, um, or 3 o, 15 o, that's, those are different ways to say it. Uh, that's basically how I think it works anyways. And so I ordered a um, bunch of beads a while ago uh, so that I could do tinier beadwork. Than what I had done previously and so I'm I'm just really happy with uh, with how this turned out and um, yeah I'm pretty pleased with it she's wearing a um, this shirt was one this blouse is one that I had made quite a while ago but it goes really good with this I think and and then I added um, this little skirt and just because it's too short she is wearing a, a pair of these shorts. Um, I made a bunch of these shorts. They are form-fitting shorts with um, a hidden zipper in the back uh, because these are very these are very hippie dolls. And <clears throat> if you want the pants to fit and be form-fitting, then they do need a zipper. <laughs> and I don't like I don't necessarily like the look of the bunched-up elastic. So. Um, which was what I was doing initially when I started making these shorts and so yeah so ramble ramble but anyways I love this doll so much she she's just everything right now she is everything her color her face up um, she's wearing a moderately vivid Angora wig and these uh, horns made by Sparrow Shop so I'm just I'm just loving her loving her um, these are two of the others. So these, I, I showed these out of order. I probably should have saved, <laughs> I should have saved her for last, uh, because I feel like there's a progression in my skills working on these four different corsets that I have to show you. Um, and so, um, this was, this was essentially the first in this new, grouping of uh, corsets that I was making and uh, there's a lot of things that I do like about this. Uh, again this is a machine embroidered flower and I added a few different colors. I think yeah I added this yellow here to it um, and then the leaves um, I added some colors to that as well and then I uh, did the gold work um, couching around that and uh, I just think that uh, the, the elements are too big I think that they are a little bit I don't know I just was and that the beads here um, I didn't have my beading needle yet so uh, I wasn't using my smallest beads and uh, so I was unhappy with that too <laughs> um, but uh, it's not it's not like it's um, not a, a, a well made corset I just uh, and doesn't fit or things like that but just some of the just some of the design elements that I um, you know didn't meet my expectations so I, I was really proud of it at the time but just over working through these uh, different ones I've become less satisfied with it <laughs> And that tends to be the way it is with a lot of the things I sew. Like right when I finish it, I'm like, oh, you know, this is, uh, I've done the best that I could for that moment in time. And then as you progress past that, then you find things that you don't like anymore. And I, I'm that way a lot with my art too. Uh, but I'm saying all this because I might, I might sell this one. So I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Um, that's a possibility. Uh, it, I might sell it. Um, I did... This one is a little bit on the bigger side as far as if I wanted to use it for other MSD size dolls like Minifees especially, but I think um, it's still, it you could still manage to get it on um, a Minifee. You just might have to be a little more creative with some of the 
lacing in some spots just because it's bigger um, but uh, yeah I think this one I I tried I, when I was making it I tried it on both on on mini fees and in on menonjanus so that it could potentially fit both um, but this was the second of these of this batch that I made. I'm gonna take that off of her before it falls off because I know it's going to. But this girl, this is an amazing doll. This is my Obsidian Manon Genou. Um, and this is, uh, she's her color is called Picot Blue. Um, these two girls are uh, version one Manon Genou's where she's version two. Um, the faces are the same. Actually, they're different. They, they, she did adjust the headbacks, so the headbacks are not, so I couldn't take that faceplate and put it on one of these headbacks. It's a little bit off. Um, but anyways, the body is a little different. It's a little slimmer um, now, and the hips and the um, version two, and a little bit wider hips, and also taller on these girls. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is my Picot Blue. She has a face up by Winter Deer Green. Winter Green Deer? I can't remember. <laughs> but I love it. Like, this is... All of these girls are my grails. Like, every single one of them is, is a doll that I wanted and never thought that I would have. Um, yeah, so uh, she has been uh, gradient dyed on her extremities. Uh, by uh, my friend Miss Mantis and um, I switched out her eyes uh, I gave her eyes she is wearing a pair of enchanted doll eyes and I'm gonna try to slow down here even if I have to split this video up I, I want to talk all that I want to talk <laughs> and so this might be a updates part one and part two because uh, I have upload I can only upload videos that are 20 to 30 minutes uh, beyond that, it keeps timing out, so I might have to split it up, but I'm going to say all I want to say, and I'm, I'm going to talk and blab, uh, so be ready for that. Um, but yeah, she has this Emma Daz Studios wig, and I am... Um, I love this girl. Uh, she So she's wearing these enchanted doll urethane eyes. She had uh, her Enzo eyes are in another. I moved them to another girl who I will show you. Actually, you can see her legs right here. I'm going to show you her later because she's my work in project, work in progress um, corset. So I'll show you that at the end. Um, but uh, uh, I'm liking her with these uh, lighter eyes. They're a light pink that they bring out the pink aspects of her face up, um, the light pink in her lips. So I just like the change. Um, she's wearing a, another pair of those shorts that have the zipper in the back. And, oop. Okay, so here was the second one that I made and uh, using, again, the same technique of cutting out some flowers uh, yeah, these three were, f were flowers that I cut from embroidered lace, added, did add some other colors to them, and then did some beading and, um, the gold metallic thread, uh, couching all around it. And, um, like, technically I think that there's a lot of beautiful things about it, but, uh, if I had it to do over... I wish I would have went in with this on this flower and added some more and varying tones because um, the details of it are just there. The colors are too similar, I guess I would say. Um, but other parts of this uh, that I really like and want to do again in another corset was adding the small beads here along the edge and along here. Um, these were there again, these are the seed beads. So I had my, I had a beading needle and I had seed beads. Um, and that was the problem before is that I didn't have a beading needle. <laughs> I didn't have a beading needle 
and I didn't even know what a beading needle was. So this is the thing, guys. This is like, this is like, I'm, people think I like know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and one of my coworkers, um, I was talking about how I, how I was frustrated that, um, I only had one needle that would fit a lot of my smaller beads. And then I had a lot of beads that, that I didn't have a needle for and I couldn't find one. <laughs> So she brought this to work and gave it to me and um, I mean I've made like I'm on my fourth corset with this one and I've just really destroyed it. <laughs> uh, it was straight when she gave it to me. Um, so I'm very very appreciative to her because this is one of those that um, so I didn't even know this existed until she cued me into it because she, she does a lot of amazing beadwork. Um, she made some really cool beaded collars for her dogs. And she also made these really cool little wraps that go on her stethoscope. And she's gonna make me one. But yeah, so it splits and that way you can put your thread in it and it's small enough still to go through the neat to go through the, the bead. Um, so that's a beading needle. I didn't I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, you know, that's been a pretty recent didn't realize that there were beading needles until a couple months ago. <laughs> and here, here it is in a medicine bottle from work because we needed something to put it in. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, so she's, um, she's wearing a pair of uh, ruffle shorts. These are the only ruffle shorts that I ever made in um, an ingenue size. Uh, and um, it was very difficult, <laughs> though uh, I think I could probably handle it now just because I made all of those other shorts and I have some techniques down from for putting in the zipper in such a small, um, a hidden zipper in such a tiny, tiny garment. Um, and I've even, after this, added some zippers to like pygmy size or blithe size. So here we go. Here's the zipper. Oop. And so it's hidden. Yeah. And I am sorry about the light. <laughs> I've, I've got this lamp here and it is a nice lamp. It's, it has a, um, uh, a, le um, I bulb in it that's real light, so it does show colors pretty good, but um, I miss my LED light uh, and I don't, I'm gonna have to buy another one and that's not going to happen right now, so <laughs> we've still got some sunlight. Uh, good thing is that the sun is staying up until like 7.30 now, which is pretty awesome, instead of like, you know, in the depths of winter here, it's like 3.30 and the sun is going down. Um, so I like, I like a lot of things about this, how this turned out, um, but, uh, ultimately, uh, it, this is another one, um, both of these might end up getting sold, um, we'll see how long this quarantine goes on and how desperate I get for money, <laughs> uh, but we'll see. Um, oh, uh, the other thing I wanted to show was her necklace that I made from, uh, I made from this crazy ring that I got off of AliExpress a long time ago. And with the idea that I wanted to make it, use it for a doll, either as a um, bracelet or something. And it doesn't, so, doesn't fit so <laughs> I had my husband cut the back of it and then I was able to stretch it enough that I could put it on her so. <laughs> uh, and what else was I is there anything else I've got two pairs of circa boots now uh, and so both of these girls are wearing my two pairs of circa boots And, okay, so let me move these girls back here. Okay, 
so there are already some things about this <laughs> uh, corset that I am unhappy with, but um, I there's a lot of things that I did on it that I have never done before and uh, that I'm pretty proud of. Um, so I've made her a matching um, skirt to go with it. So um, uh, same technique where I cut out a flower from uh, some embroidered lace and maybe you can see where it came from. That's where it came from, this same lace. And uh, what you can tell, the difference, what I did is that the stamens are in black. Um, and I went over them uh, in green embroidery thread. Uh, and then did the decorative couching of the gold thread around that. Uh, this leaf right here, that a larger green leaf, that one I am actually embroidered. So that was that's the largest thing that I've embroidered at this point in time. Uh, and then all of the tiny green leaves all over this, those are all hand embroidered and hand beaded. So there's all the beading laid down the gold work first and then I did the embroidery and um, boy keeps blowing out uh, of all the leaves and I then did the beadwork and this this one and this one each of these corsets probably took about 40 hours uh, they each took about five days each spending all day, eight hours if not more, <laughs> working on them. So I'm not slow, or I'm not quick, I'm slow. Um, so doing these, people are always saying, well, you could, you know, sell your sewing and to replace your income. <laughs> no, I'm way too slow. Uh, yeah, way, way too slow. Um, if I was making one of these a day, you know, maybe I could do, <laughs> maybe that would be something to consider but no i'm making like one a week and that's 40 hours just working that on that one <laughs> so it's just not really a practical thing um if i do sell anything it's because i decided i didn't want it for my own dolls um or i don't need it for my own dolls so anytime i sell anything that's usually the case um i don't ever go at this with the idea that oh i'm I'm going to sell these things and you know earn my living <laughs> um, people who do do that like you you do have to have a strategy and be practical about it you can't there's no way that I could sell this for enough money to make it worth the time um, yeah uh, not and earn a living wage in America um, unfortunately that just wouldn't work so but anyways, uh, the skirt here, sorry for dull nudity, but the skirt is, uh, it's slightly pleated and I do wish I would have pleated it a little uh, finer because uh, you can't even hardly see that it's pleated, but it's got um, the Dupani lace, the same lace that was color that was used here under the skirt. And, um, yeah, very, uh, to me it feels very autumn and very fall, but I just, I love this Dupani, I love this color, um, and have been wanting to make something out of it since I got it. This, this was a, um, I ordered, so silkbaron.com is where I get my Dupani lace from, and the uh, their prices are pretty good, but unfortunately you have to buy pieces by the yard. Um, and most of their Dupani laces are around $18, $19 a yard. Um, but they do have a deal where you can get um, 16 colors, uh, half yards, 
15, so 16 different half yards of all different colors um, for uh, $150. So, um, but that's generally the only way you can order a half yard from them. They do have special sales once in a while where you can do that, um, but uh, uh, it's not very frequent. Um, so I had ordered uh, a bunch of laces from them back in uh, August. That was my last order from them. And uh, there were some purples and blues and pinks, you know, those sorts of colors that are my, what I would consider my signature colors. But I was feeling very, you know, autumn and fall. And so a lot of colors were oranges and browns and, um, and uh, I've been really, really wanting the pinks and the, you know, all the colors that I typically like to work with. Uh, and so <clears throat> at the beginning of the month, before this all started, <laughs> I went ahead and ordered, um, uh, spent like days figuring out what colors I wanted to order and I, um, and I made, made an order. Um, and shortly after that, the proverbial shit hit the fan. And usually I've gotten all my shipments from Silk Baron like immediately, like within a few days, um, uh, within a couple business days, they ship out stuff. Um, but because of everything that ended up happening, it was three weeks before I got my colors, but I'm gonna grab them and show you. So here are my colors. Let's see. Let's, um, lots and lots of beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, pinks and the blues and teals, uh, lavenders, um, just. And some of the colors are kind of like other colors that I've gotten, but they will look and react such different ways under different lighting. These are such alive fabrics. Um, I like, I'm so totally addicted to them, the way they, they change colors. Most of these, not all, but most of them have two different colors in them. And so if you look at this one, um, if you look at the selvage line, I guess that's not the selvage, it's the other way, but you can see the pur there's the purple color, but then there's this tealish greenish color that's running the other way. And so it just, like I said, it's just, it shifts. I'm trying to think of what the, it's like uh, those kinds of, colors, uh, they have a special name for it. Um, it just went out of my brain. There's a special name for these kind of paints that do this, that change color depending on the lighting and how you change it. Um, so just, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so, so excited. So uh, when these came in, I had already, I'd already cut out this corset from colors that I had previously started, um, or that I already had. So this one, gonna, there might be doll nudity here, so I apologize. I'm trying to hold this on. Uh, she's still attached here too. So these are two of the new colors from the new batch and going into this new corset and I'm um, still in the process so she's attached here to this thread because I don't cut it until I'm done typically um, so it's not like I cut a piece off and use it I try to do it this way so that I can end the thread at the end of the design instead of stopping and starting um, if that makes sense. So she's attached to it, but these colors, oh my gosh. Um, let me put it back down. 
but yes anyways this is I did want to show her her eyes so she's wearing those Enzo eyes and um, I really like them in her if they're gonna show up on the camera with her face up and the wig it's an Amadez studio wig Ugh, love the colors I'm just in love with the colors um, and I realize that I never showed you guys, uh, the clothes that I made for my beautiful little, um, you know, Pavlo Pavlovla doll from Russia. Uh, she is a BJD artist from Russia. And this little doll that I did a box opening on a few weeks ago, I made her a bunch of little outfits and um, was this the first one I made? I think this was the first one I made and it's actually gosh, my light. Let me see here. How can I change that? If I try to bring her too close to the camera, then we lose the light. <laughs> um, it's reversible. It's a completely reversible outfit. Um, so that was the first one that I made her. And um, I made three others. And I discovered that the it these little dresses fit, do fit my... Um, um, Lily Cat Colleen doll. So this is another reversible one. And I made two others, which uh, are right now on these bunnies. <laughs> uh, this was a little bunny that came with uh, its stock for one of my Blythe dolls and I just and I forgot her name I forgot the Blythe doll's name but she's got this little medallion that has a B on it for Blythe um, and uh, so I made these dresses because again this is before the world blew up <laughs> uh, I ordered a sister for her um, and that doll is has is and has been in transit. Um, she's coming from Russia, so I don't expect her anytime soon. And then with all the stuff that's uh, going on with the world, I expect that to be even further delayed. But she will definitely be a bright ray of sunshine when she does arrive. And I will be sure to do a box opening video for her. Um, but her sister is a bunny and has bunny ears. And uh, these will be the dresses that she gets to choose from. <laughs> so I'll be sure to share her with you when she arrives. Okay. Anything else I was going to blab about? Um, I don't think so. So uh, maybe I'll go ahead and end it here. Got to get my blabbing out <laughs> and show you guys my dolls. Um, I have, I guess, uh, what I, I will talk about is, and I think I might've mentioned this, is that I have several dolls that are basically trapped behind quarantine. I've got a doll from Italy. I've got two dolls from Twiggling, um, who is in, in Spain, and Spain is one of the hardest pit hit areas of Europe right now. Um, and, uh, oh, it just went out of my brain. It was another Russian doll, uh, pygmy sized, you know, I think she's 29 centimeter, um, adorable mini doll, uh, that has been delayed. Uh, so yeah, it, it's just the, the way things are going to be. Um, so there'll be a flood of fun things <laughs> eventually coming in. But uh, okay, I think I'll call it quits here. 
I hope you guys are having a great week and that you're staying safe and washing your hands <laughs> and uh, having um, time to play with your dolls and uh, those fun things too.